As God's holy people, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We come together to offer worship and praise, and mindful of our sins, we ask God for grace and heart. We pray. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord. We pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure. In the name of your only beloved Son, we may abound in good works. For Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, set, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce, it, announce to you the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they had turned their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them, and he did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response of the song is, Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach, teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. 
Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. He teaches the way. The, way the, the second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew cast a net into the sea. They were fishing. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in the boat mending their nets. And he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired hand and followed. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> So I'm sure at one time or another you had to make a U-turn, you missed your turn, you had to turn around or take a detour. These times are often very frustrating. We want to get to our destination quickly and be efficient that we know that yes, at times we make the wrong turn, the U-turn, and, and so on. And I say this because in our first reading, Jonah had to make a U-turn, not of his own choice, but because of God. This passage in the book of Jonah kind of abbreviates the story of Jonah. Remember the story of Jonah? Jonah was called to proclaim repentance to Nineveh. But Nineveh is the arch enemy of God's people, Israel. So Jonah did not want anything to do with them. He said, no, I don't want to go have them repent. I want them destroyed. And I know how merciful you are. You will give them mercy, not destroy them as you are calling. So he flees. He goes on a boat and tries to escape. But a storm comes up, and the sort of wonder, what's going on? Why are we, why are we in danger? Well, Jonah confesses it's probably because I'm, I'm trying to escape God's will. They throw him overboard on it. Of course, a, a great large fish swallows him and puts him off back on the shore where he's supposed to be doing his God's will. And Jonah then, as we hear, proclaims that this city is going to be destroyed. Not saying you need to repent, but it's going to be destroyed. And the people re respond. The low and the great, the king and the little small people repent. The story goes that Noah was very, Jonah was very angry because he knew this was going to happen. 
that God would spare these people. They would repent. Repent means turn around. Turn around. Take a different course. And for us as God's people, it is to turn back to God's will, to God's goodness. This is what Jesus proclaims. Repent. Turn back to God. We need to observe that Galilee was very much a mixing pot of all kinds of people and their cultures and, and religions. And the Jewish people were kind of being accommodated to that. Jesus said, no, you need to repent. You need to come back to what is right, to the gospel of God, to the truth. And so we hear his first disciples respond to that. It's rather odd and it's said that these these fishermen immediately respond, but that is how God's grace often works. This is a, a good thing. Perhaps if we heard that there is a, a person going to hand out a thousand dollar bills, we'd probably drop everything and, and run and go. So these men perhaps were hungry, hungering for the goodness that someone would stand up, hold them to what is true and what is right. So our scriptures invite us to upon them the call to repent. To repent, to turn back. And often on our nature and our pride, we think, well, I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I'm better than others. And so far, say my prayer, come to Mass, and, and so forth. But we know we can do better. We're often just sort of, uh, plead, we're just complacent. I'm getting, I'm getting along. We have a desire to do better, to get God to glory. Because through our words, our actions, we inspire others. We witness to others how to live the gospel, how to divide from what is holy, to do good. Because the world is in need, is hungry. For people who will do what is right and what is holy. And of course, we as God's people here at St. Rose, we're doing a lot of good. But we know we can do more. That's a call to repent. We're also called to be disciples. We often think, well, I know, I know enough. But we need to deepen our, our relationship with our Lord Jesus that He can inspire us. Not be like Jonah, flee and say, I don't need part of your plan, God. So I ask you and invite you to ponder this gift of repentance and the gift of discipleship that God has called us into this wonderful relationship, into this wonderful mystery of His love, that we can be instruments of His mercy, of His forgiveness in the world instead of condemning. Instead of ridicule, instead of shame, we can bring God's peace, God's mercy into the world. So thank God we can hear these words. That God calls us and He blesses us. In our response, may our lives continue in glory and praise, lead others to that gospel of God's God's peace. As God's holy people, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, that all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial of the Father. For him all things remain, for us made and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and he came. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate, the Sabbath day and was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the Lord to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess the baptism of the Lord. Relying on the Lord's ever present compassion and love, we make these prayers, trusting that they will be heard. For the church trusting in Jesus' constant presence, that we may act through the reign of God to the realization of the world, loving God and loving neighbor as we love ourselves, we praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a nation that we may repent from the wrongs we have done, whose repercussions continue to be felt and the wrongs that we continue to do, and turn to the source of life and goodness. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to defend life, especially those participating in the March for Life in Washington, D.C., that God might reward them for their faithfulness and witness. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from blood, from lack of shelter, heat, adequate nutrition, or health care, that they may find sustenance and sustenance and help in the generosity of those with plenty. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women religious who have taken to the heart of Jesus' calling to follow him, that they may be blessed in the work that they do. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our first community, that we may always be willing to look into our own hearts and repent and return to the Lord when we have strength. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for the intentions of the past, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed of our families and their community, may they know eternal, may they know eternal in heaven. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for our young people preparing for the sacrament of confirmation celebrated next Sunday, that God's spirit may be upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Merciful God, we trust in the generosity of your great mercy as we acknowledge our need for it and seek your forgiveness. Listen to the prayers which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit for our salvation through Christ our Lord. 
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings by your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy at immortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of praise as we acclaim. Spirit, you give life to all things and make them whole. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, gracious and make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, at whose command. We celebrate these mysteries. The night he was betrayed, he himself the bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and us into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed 
to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body, blood of the Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit of Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of appreciation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people of gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O most merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you after passing from this life, give commitments to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, a form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and death. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, I'm, I'm sure you're not coming to Sunday Mass next, Sunday Day Mass. We're going to have confirmations that are only reserved for the Confirmande and their family. So, you might pass that word around. We're trying to get it through Facebook and, and so forth. And also pray for our kind of Monday. We're about 27 from our parish and also St. Anthony going to be confirmed by Bishop Timmy next Sunday, 1030 Mass. Pray for them that they'll be inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is in. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. 